Let's do some more Punnett squares. Let's do Mendelian genetics for the monohybrid cross using the Punnett square. And we'll do our first example with two heterozygous tall plants. When we cross two heterozygous tall plants, the first plant is going to have the alleles in its heterozygous form of capital T, lowercase t, heterozygous for tall, with the capital T being the tall allele and the lowercase t being the short allele. Since we are crossing two of the same plants, we also have the second parent as being capital T, lowercase t, heterozygous. When we segregate the alleles for these two parents, we get capital T, lowercase t on the top, capital T, lowercase t on the left. Now we're ready to do the actual cross. When we do the cross, it's just like when you did a multiplication table back in elementary school. You are going column to row. And in this case, the first offspring has the probability of being a homozygous tall. The second probability for an offspring is heterozygous for tall. The third probability of an offspring is heterozygous for tall. And the last possibility for an offspring is homozygous recessive, which is homozygous for short. Now that we've completed the Punnett square, we can now break down our genotypic ratio, g colon, and our phenotypic ratio, p colon. The genotypic ratio always follows the order homozygous dominant to heterozygous to homozygous recessive. Capital T, capital T, capital T, lowercase t, lowercase lo t, lowercase t. This ratio from the Punnett square has one offspring being homozygous dominant, two offspring being heterozygous, and one offspring being homozygous recessive for a ratio of one to two to one. Twenty-five percent tall homozygous dominant, fifty percent tall heterozygous, twenty-five percent being homozygous recessive for the short trait. When we look at the phenotypic ratio, we are going to compare dominant to recessive. In this case, three of our offspring have the probability of carrying the dominant allele. Therefore, three are dominant, one is recessive for a ratio of three to one. 75% dominant, 25% recessive. This goes along with Mendel's law of dominance that in in an unchecked population, that 75% of the offspring should show the dominant trait if you are crossing two heterozygous parents. Let's do another example. Here we have a cross between a heterozygous round plant and a wrinkled plant. Now the alleles here are capital R is round, lowercase r is wrinkled. The first parent is heterozygous for round. We're going to have a genotype of capital R, lowercase r. The second parent has the recessive trait and therefore is going to be homozygous recessive, lowercase r, lowercase r. We begin by segregating the alleles for the first parent on the top. We then segregate the alleles for the second parent on the left. We are now ready to do our cross. Capital R with lowercase r, column to row. Lowercase r to lowercase r, column to row. Capital R, lowercase r, column to row. And lowercase r, lowercase r, column to row. We now look at the ratios. The genotypic ratio follows the order of homozygous dominant, heterozygous, homozygous recessive. In this case, none of our offspring have the possibility of being homozygous dominant. Two of our offspring have the probability of being heterozygous, and two of our offspring have the probability of being 
homozygous recessive for a ratio of 0 to 2 to 2. When we look at the phenotypic ratio comparing dominant to recessive, two of our offspring carry the dominant allele. Two of our offspring are homozygous recessive. Two of them will be round. Two of them have the possibility of being wrinkled. This is a ratio of two dominant to two recessive. 50% dominance, 50% recessive. For our last example, we're going to cross two green seed plants. The alleles for green seeds are capital Y is yellow dominant, lowercase y is green recessive, and if we remember the original premise was could Mendel guarantee all green peas because the peas that are green are sweeter and the pea soup will taste better than the bitter yellow peas. So when we cross two green seed plants, this is the recessive trait. So both parents are going to be homozygous recessive, two lowercase y's. When we segregate, we get two lowercase y's across the board. The two lowercase y's give us examples for the cross that all of the alleles possible are going to be lowercase y's. That means all of the possibilities are offspring that are lowercase y's homozygous recessive. If all of the offspring are homozygous recessive, all of the offspring will display the recessive trait. This means that when we look at our genetic genotypic ratio, zero will be yellow, zero will be heterozygous for yellow, and all of them will be homozygous recessive for green, a ratio of zero to zero to four. Our phenotypic ratio ends up being dominant to recessive, zero of the offspring have a possibility of being yellow, and all of the possibilities are green, the recessive trait, for a ratio of zero to four. 100% of the offspring are going to show the recessive trait. So, could Mendel guarantee sweet green pea soup? Of course, if all of his plants are homozygous recessive, their offspring will only display the homozygous recessive trait.